Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to some, some breaking news. Apparently the Toronto Raptors have been in trade discussions with the Memphis Grizzlies and are possibly acquiring Mark Gasol and Mike Conley at the expense of you know five-time All-Star Kyle Lowry and Jonas Valanciunas. Now, we know the Toronto Raptors have been up and down as of late, and there's been a lot of rumors swirling about the Raptors being involved in trade discussions. You know, we made a video on how Mark Gasol and Mike Conley, or I, I believe we've talked about, we've at least mentioned how they've been up for trade. The Memphis Grizzlies are looking to get rid of everyone. And this report coming from Jake Fisker, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, but regardless, he's a he's a reporter from Sports Illustrated, so seemingly credible. Obviously, we, we don't really know. Woj is really the guy that you really trust with these sorts of things, but certainly this is this is a wild trade that's coming out of left field. I'm personally a bit a bit shook about it. Obviously, Marc Gasol and Mike Conley are two phenomenal talents. They're a bit older. They're on the older aging side with uh, Mike Conley being 31 and Marc Gasol being 34. But regardless of their age, they're both having pretty solid seasons. Marc Gasol is on a bit of a decline, and people that followed the Raptors Digest from the very start, you know, the very beginning, our first biggest video was uh, speculating on Raptors rumors last season that the Toronto Raptors are possibly going to make a trade for Marc Gasol. So it's not surprising to see his name come up in discussions, again linked with the Toronto Raptors. But he hasn't been too, too great this season. He's not been bad by any means. He's not fallen off a cliff. But 15 points and 8, re eight to 9 rebounds per game for, for Marc Gasol, which is, which is pretty good stats. You know, it's better than what Jonas has been producing despite his progression the season before he sustained that injury but regardless Marcus Sol will probably be a I, I'd say for right now he'd be an improvement over Jonas but honestly that's up for debate that that's just my opinion obviously Marcus Sol has had this more story career he's a multi-time all-star and he's been a defensive player of the year but with his age and his slow regression I know he's dealt with an ankle injury this year as well I, I I'd still put him above Jonas a little bit but not for long not for long it would be a win now move from Masai maybe this season next season I guess Pau Gasol has been pretty solid with as he's aged and progressed obviously their siblings so maybe maybe they have a bit of the fountain and youth inside them but Marcus Hull is a it would be a very solid addition I'm not 100% sure now, this, this might be a hot take, but I don't think he really improves the center position for us because that puts Sergi Bach on the bench. and Because uh, you'd assume if we're making this move, Gasol is going to be our full-time starter. And Sergi Bach has been ridiculously good this season, especially when we had the two-center dynamic duo going. So, so I'm not sure how, how, the, how this deal at the center position improves us because he pushes Serge to the bench and he's been producing at a phenomenal clip playing in the center position, especially when he had a guaranteed backup center because him and Jonas kind of rotated but Serge dominated that starting role but but they were we've been talking like they were an all-star center duo you know we're saying they aren't our all-stars individually but together they make up a superstar center so and obviously Jonas has been out for a long time but he's coming back soon I, I really don't know how that really improves us enough to to shake up the complete chemistry at the center position the really interesting look is at the point guard because Kyle Lowry, we just made a video, we just dropped one yesterday, definitely check it out if you haven't seen it, about what the Raptors should do with Kyle Lowry. He's been, he has this nagging back injury, he's supposed to play tonight, I just want him to rest personally, that was my take. Riker said he'd be interested in moving Lowry, but personally, I don't really think there's a debate between Mike Conley and Kyle Lowry when both of them are at full health. I think it's, it's, it's not a debate. Kyle Lowry's the better player. Mike Conley is very good. You know, he's averaging 20 points per game this season, six assists. Very solid defender, but Kyle Lowry, the way he facilitates an offense, the way he can shoot, the way he just takes over games, I don't really think it's a debate, as well as the chemistry that he's built with. Maybe not necessarily Kawhi, because that's a big issue throughout the season, but the rest of the roster, Kyle Lowry really gets the best out of everyone. And as much as I love Mike Conley's game, you know, I'd love to maybe have him paired with Kyle Lowry in the backcourt. And run those two guard lineups that the Toronto Raptors loved love to put out there, you know, with Fred or Delano, regardless. That 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 would be more ideal. But it's kind of surprising to see this rumor come up, especially with the kind of confrontation. And the Toronto Raptors are trying to build chemistry right now. It's that's kind of been our biggest issue aside from the the three point shooting consistency and sometimes the defensive lapses. But the Toronto Raptors are trying to build consistency. And Kyle Lowry is the captain of this roster. He's the guy that really leads the charge. And I'd be surprised to see this move go down. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm a bit baffled. I don't think it would be a horrible move, as it might improve us in the short term, but I don't think it guarantees anything. Because honestly, if let's just take a healthy Kyle Lowry. We'll, we'll apply that healthy Kyle Lowry label to the guy at the beginning of the season. And a healthy Jonas Valanciunas, you know, the way they were playing before injury, and you give me a healthy Marcus Gasol and a healthy Mike Conley, 
personally, I take the I take the Lowry and Jonas over Mike Conley and Marcus Gasol. That might be a hot take, but let me know in the comment section below. Completely healthy, who would you take? Because I take the two Raptors guys over the two Memphis Grizzlies players. With Kyle Lowry's leadership and what he's shown to do on a consistent night in night out basis when he's healthy, he he's a he's a legitimate All Star. He's five time All Star. He made it this season despite you know some controversy there. But he he's a legitimate top tier point guard in the league. And Jonas Valanciunas has only improved every single season, and he's really shown some improvement this year before he went out with injury so I like the Grizzlies players but in a vacuum I don't really like what's happening and because Masai is such a phenomenal GM you know it seems like every move that he makes makes it works it's just, he always he only makes smart moves and the ones that don't work out are usually because of injury and just stuff that's kind of out of his control Masai Jerry makes sound decisions and because this is the case and this is being rumored and apparently Kyle Lowry has been let known he's understanding of the kind of trade discussions that have been going on so because all this is the case I'm led to believe there's something going on behind the scenes you know we hate I hate making conspiracy theories and all those sorts of things but could Kyle Lowry have requested a trade we, we know how frustrated he was with the Toronto Raptors in trading his best friend Damar obviously the season has been up and down and when everyone's been healthy it's looked great but you know with injuries and all those sorts of stuff it's been pretty tough the past couple weeks and Maybe the losing on top of the already picked up frustration from the summer uh, has forced Kyle Lowry to, to privately make a trade request. I, I'm not really sure. I don't want to start spreading those rumors, but it's certainly something to think about. I'm not I'm not saying it's happened at all. I don't have any insider information, but I'm really surprised that this is in the rumors if there isn't something going on behind the scenes. I'll leave, I'll leave that speculation to the comment section. Let me know if you think that's actually real or I'm just spewing out some crazy stuff. But the, I think another thing that, that might be more realistic and more reasonable to believe upon the current circumstances, we just made a video on it. Kyle Lowry is dealing with chronic back issues. And obviously I'm not a medical doctor, but he <laughs> chronic issues don't go away. They're, especially for a 32-year-old point guard, and we don't have access to the medical records. You know, Maybe if he rested for a month or two, that's been my opinion. That's been I, I thought that should be the course of action. Apparently Kyle Lowry wants to play tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers. So... Uh, He's, he's choosing to play through it. I'm not sure if it's the medical staff's decision or him, but maybe Masai doesn't think Kyle Lowry will get healthy. Maybe he has access to information that we don't, and there's no indication in sight that Kyle Lowry's going to get back to that healthy form. And for as well Kyle Lowry plays when he's like he's been the past month, you know, at facilitating the offense, still being able to play, make defensive moves, he still by no means is he a broken player with this back injury. But his inability to score the ball and really create offense for people, you know, but via himself, you know, be a creator, because he's our second best guy. You know, Pascal Siakam has really elevated his game, but on a championship team, it's tough for Pascal Siakam to be your second best player or or second most relied upon player. I think that's better wording, because I think Pascal Siakam has overtaken Kyle Lowry for production, but do we really want to rely on a Pascal Siakam who really hasn't had experience with being a star? Being a starter player, a guy with all the focus on him, especially in a playoff series, with our one shot at impressing Kawhi, I don't necessarily know if that's the case. And if Kyle Lowry is too injured or his chronic issue is much more severe than it's the Raptors are letting out, then maybe Kyle Lowry isn't physically capable of withstanding that role as a Toronto Raptors second most relied upon player. You know, second most important player, the guy that's setting up everyone, doing all these sorts of things, and supposed to get you a bucket when Kawhi, La Ka sorry, Kawhi Leonard is double teamed. Maybe that's the case. Maybe Masai Ujiri sees that and he says we need to get some value. And although Mike Conley and Marcus Gasol are older players, they won't have much longevity. You know, and two of them are pretty injury prone as well, but they're both healthy as of now, as I believe. I'm going to keep it real. I haven't kept track of many Memphis Grizzlies games this season, but I, from the m minimal research I did, I want to get this pot out as fast as possible. I think they're both healthy as of late. So if they're the safer bets going in the playoffs, and even if it's a, a step down in pure talent, you know, the Toronto Raptors have already went in all in on this season, and maybe it's too big of a risk to have Kyle Lowry unsure for being 100% healthy in the playoffs. Now, it would really hurt me to see this move go down initially. I, like, I like the players of Marcus Gasol and Mike Conley. I'm sure I'll grow to very much enjoy them. Kyle Lowry, he's, besides Steve Nash, he's my favorite player of all time. He just goes out there. He's a gritty guy. He does... He does everything on the Toronto Raptors floor, and when he's healthy, he's certainly one of the most underrated players in the NBA. And as much as I trust Masai, I really don't know if this is the move. Obviously, we're all in on this season, and if Kyle Lowry just physically hasn't shown that he's capable of doing it, like if he's physically, if it's looking like he's going to get healthy, this is stupid. 
this is this is dumb. This is all prefaced in the fact that the Raptors have some information that Kyle Lowry can't be healthy or he's demanding a trade or some something dumb like that. This is all prefaced like that because I really won't, don't want this move to happen if Kyle Lowry, there's a chance Kyle Lowry gets back to his beginning of the season form. But regardless, if that's the case, then I guess it makes sense to, to squeeze all you can out of Lowry and I guess Jonas would have to take the sacrifice. It's a really valuable piece, but it's really unfortunate. Not only because Kyle Lowry's trade value is the lowest it's been in the past five seasons, but Kyle Lowry's done so much for this team. You know, he's been our leader. He's been our main guy. You know, DeMar DeRozan, people could argue, was the better player, but Kyle Lowry's really the engine that ran us. And, like, he's he's the best. He's Kyle Lowry. I know he's had playoff struggles, but most of that was due to injury, and the really only downfall to Kyle Lowry's game over the past few years has been injury. You know, he does it on a night-to-night basis, I know a lot of people, I read the comments, I read Reddit, I read Twitter, I read all of this. A lot of people are down on Kyle Lowry right now. But as I mentioned in the last video, I think a lot of that just has to do with this injury. And a healthy Kyle Lowry doesn't make sense to get rid of him. Unless, obviously, you're bringing back a, a superstar or whatever, Anthony Davis or some dumb stuff. But it doesn't make sense to trade Kyle Lowry right now. And he's he's the, really the glue that will make this... He's, he's the hope. He's the hope to make this chemistry work. I know Mike Conley can facilitate offense, and maybe Fred can step up as well, but this just sucks. I know I'm rambling right now. I'm trying to to be focused and determined, but you guys, people that listen over the summer, know that we were shook up initially when DeMar DeRozan got traded, but that we were bringing in Kawhi, so we, as much as it hurt and all that, it we got over a little bit quicker, but even me personally, and this might be a hot take, and especially where a lot of people are down on Kyle Lowry right now. I might get flamed in the comment section, but I, I'd be much more hurt to see Kyle Lowry go than I was to see DeMar go. As much as DeMar repped the city, repped Toronto, uh, and off the court, it, DeMar was a more likable guy. He didn't, you know, he was all in on Toronto. But as a player, I just have fallen in love with Ky- watching Kyle Lowry play over the past few seasons. And to see him get traded, like, for not not for not a lot back I guess Marcus Hall and Mike Conley are two very good players it would kill me man it would kill me to see that happen and I know that there has to be some sort of circumstances because we this would be stupid this would be absolutely stupid I'm on record as saying this I know a lot of people are saying just trade him for nothing and he's a cancer in the locker room all that sort of stuff but I don't think that's the case. I think that would just be dumb unless he's injured or he, he, you know, he's expressed as a cancer in the locker room. He said he's he doesn't want to be in on this team. Anyways, I'm rambling. I'm a huge Kyle Lowry fan, and to see him trade it will definitely shake me up. But if it's if there's other stuff going on that we don't know about yet, we'll, it might be the move. But if on face value, I'm not a big fan of this trade. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think this is the move Kyle Lowry should be dealt with, if he should be dealt it with at all. Should we just rest him for a while? Or should we keep doing what we're doing and make him play through chronic back pain? Who knows what's going on with the Toronto Raptors right now. We've been having an up and down past couple of months. But regardless, we will be here to update you on all of the news that's happening. So stay tuned to the Raptors Digest. I know it's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of deflated right now. Is the more it's sinking in that this could be possible, the more I, I'm a bit shook up about it. Hopefully this is just a Mimi Sports Illustrated clickbait thing. You know, obviously fake news sucks, but hopefully it's fake news, in my opinion. You know, as much as as much as fun trades are, I, I'm not a big fan of this one happening. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know. I want to hear your thoughts on this in the comment section. Try to get this out as fast as possible. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Definitely check out Riker's uh, phone-in pod that's dropping tonight, I believe. So you guys are the best. You're the best, and regardless of what happens to the Raptors, We'll be good. We'll be good. We have Kawhi right now, and yeah. (laughs) Anyways, I'm signing off. Cheers.